In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at using an invisible button. Now, um, I can use an existing button that I already have, and I might go ahead and use one of the ones here, such as this one's a little bit more exciting. The Instead of using the one with the animation inside of a mask, I'm going to go ahead and use one of these other sample buttons. So that one is the sample MC animation button. So I'm going to duplicate that and call it sample invisible button. So let's drag that up, double click on it, and we're going to go inside this timeline and we're going to change something about this. We're actually going to alter this animation so that when we um, roll over this, we change the size of it. Now this is not necessarily something that's a great idea, but it's good for um, showing why we use an invisible button. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the dynamic text and for the rollover, I'm going to stretch out this particular symbol so that it's obvious that we are changing that symbol somehow. So we've changed one state, we have to duplicate that and then remove, uh, uh, replace the classic tween so that we get obviously some sort of visual change here. Now you'll notice that we're changing the button size and that's not always a great idea, but um, it will work well for, for what we're doing here. Now that I've got my text there, you'll see that we can anim show that animation as well. And so this is a really nice example of why we might want to use an invisible button. So I'm going to go ahead and use um, Control Enter, and you'll see that we've got it here, but it's kind of strange. It does happen that it only is using a rollover for when we first move over it, but then you'll notice that the roll out um, takes the whole button. And I'd really like it so that it's just the area that was originally used. So um, I'm going to actually make an invisible button in here. Ooh, there we go. I wanted to see if I could get it so it would, would kind of go funky on me, which it kind of did there for a second. And that's one of those things, anytime you're changing the scale of a button um, as the rollover, it can do some funny things. So, um, to fix this, we're going to make an invisible button. So let's create a new layer, put that layer at the top, and this is going to be called invisible button. Um, actually, I should probably just do button with, so we can tell that that's different. And I'm going to take the original instance and just duplicate it up with the Alt key held down, and that way we've got... Um, a good shape to begin with and I might just scale it down just a tiny bit so you can obviously tell that this is not the original. So um, now we need to turn this thing into a button. So I'm going to um, right click, go to convert to library and this time I will choose a button symbol and this will be my invisible button. Let's double click on it and change the up state all the way over to the hit state. So the only thing that's there is the hit state. Now when I go back to the other timeline, I can double click outside of the, the hit state or click back on the sample invisible button. You'll see that that invisible button has actually changed color and it has some transparency. And that's to show that it is an invisible button. Now we do have to modify our code as well. So let's click on our actions and open that up and this is what we're going to change. We really don't need this dot mouse uh, button mode at true anymore. And the reason why is because um, buttons automatically will change our mouse to a, to a hand when we roll over it. We also don't need mouse children anymore because we're going to be making our code actually point directly at that button. So we can delete both of those lines of code. The next thing we have is a function rollover and the function rollout, and those will stay exactly like they are. And then we have the this event, the two event listeners. Well, all we have to do now is target instead of just this, is we're going to target the invisible button. So we need an instance name on the invisible button. So we'll click on that invisible button. We'll call this inv underscore btn, so invisible button. And now back in my code. I'll do this dot inv underscore btn dot add event listener. 
and the same thing here dot add event listener so all we have now is our functions for rollover and rollout and then we've attached the event listeners to the buttons themselves so the this of course is pointing to the main timeline so when we roll over the invisible buttons it'll make the main timeline go to over and out so let's try this with control enter or test movie control test movie and you'll see now that we have a movie clip button that movie clip button will keep the region for the rollover static so it does not animate which gives us a little bit more reliability now I'm gonna copy this code because we're gonna be pasting this code um, for the next button down here as well so I'm gonna go inside here and I want to show you in this one this is a little bit more aggressive of a button it has some other states but it shows a really nice layout here you'll see it it enters and then it stops at that section the stop section and then I have this invisible button appear and this invisible button also has the same property right now the same name and then that invisible button is active for the over and out sections and then as soon as I get to the hit state that invisible button is gone it runs through an animation and then it will go back to the beginning and re-enter so you'll notice that the actions layer also has a new keyframe at actions 15 so that I can paste my code here and then at frame 30 or after frame 30 that code is gone so this is where I'm actually going to copy and paste that code so that we have the function rollover and roll out and you'll notice now if we test our our movie we'll get a rollover and roll out for the ball but there's no click event yet so we just need to add one more function and one more event listener so this will be function my click this go to and play hit that will run the hit section of this animation and then of course we need an event listener which is almost the exact same things as the others the only difference is the mouse event dot click event will run the my click function so this should be done let's go ahead and save that and test with control enter and you'll see it does indeed work and it just repeats that same animation I have the rollover rollout as soon as I click it repeats that over again so that's you know what you can do with um, invisible buttons and, and animated movie clip buttons you can do all sorts of different things um, in the next section what I'd like you to do is create four buttons based upon templates that you find at flash mint or template monster you don't have to make them look the buttons look exactly like the buttons at those templates but rather be inspired by the way that they animate um, one of the things that I'd like you to do is also make it so that when you click on the buttons they navigate to the URL of the exact template that you referenced so that means if you go to a website like template monster you want to make sure that you are going to the template with the name oops get lots of um, stuff there you want to make sure that you are going to the template that um, is specified so that if I'm mimicking this button that's the one that it's going to and of course you're going to be using the code that you used in the previous tutorials where um, you add your function for going to a website and then the event listener for the click whoops let me go back to here so that when you click on those buttons they will jump to that website and you can do that of course on the main timeline so you don't need to put that inside the timelines of the buttons themselves you can put it on the main timeline just by putting it here where you have the code that has labeled your buttons and that's it um, that should be the end of the tutorials, so if you have any questions, let me know, and thank you for your time.